is kind of desperately trying to stuff the genie back in the bottle. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's a great part. It was wonderful to work with him. And um, actually really funny, I, I worked opposite two other Brits. Mm -hmm. So John Boyega and then my friend in the movie is played um, by Karen Gillian, a uh, fantastic mm -hmm. actress um, who's actually Scottish. Uh, so the three of us were like, <laughs> you know, we were like, putting on our American accents. Um, Tom was like, how did you Brits get in here? Like, what are you, you know, how did we end up with this? But um, yeah, it was very fun. Another actor you appear with in the film is Bill Paxton, who yes. sadly just passed away, he plays your father. Yes. And is one of the pressures on your character that she has, he's, he's sick. Yeah. But um, what's wrong with him? And can you talk about working with Bill? Uh, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so Bill plays my father who, um, is doesn't have the medical insurance that he needs basically um, in order to have himself taken care of properly and he's sort of slowly destabilizing he's sort of slowly going downhill and I think the sense of powerlessness that May feels that she can't stop this and she can't help him is the way that the circle really get its claws into her because they start to sort of through her he gets medical insurance that she can take care of him mm -hmm and it's it's a way that they begin that she begins to feel so indebted to this company that she she sort of stops being able to have a way out or really to have a sense of her own mind or identity and i think that that's a very emotive way to sort of control someone is mm -hmm. is uh if you feel that that care that's there for your family is going to go a responsibility um, yeah yeah and responsibility um yeah i think i think that's that's a tough one. Um, so, so the film, the film really, really deals with that. And um, yeah, I, I hope you won't mind if I don't talk about Bill. But it's it's um, it was very sad. And yeah, I enjoy working with him a lot. Yeah, he was a wonderful guy. I met him many times, interviewing him, and he had a real everyman quality to him, just like Tom Hanks in some ways, very warm. Yeah, and yeah, no, it mm -hmm. was a it was a bit of a shock. I'm still mm -hmm. reading a bit. Yeah, well. Um, you know, uh, another uh, story I read recently that I actually didn't know very much about, but La La Land just won, yes. uh, didn't win Best Picture, but won the Oscar <laughs> for, uh, yes. for Emma Stone. Yes. And uh, uh, that you, this was a role that you were potentially up for. Can you, uh, I've read a lot of conflicting reports. Can you sort of clarify, were you up for this part? Mm -hmm. And how do you feel now? You know, it's one of these frustrating things where sort of names get attached to projects mm -hmm. very early on as a way to kind of build anticipation or excitement for mm -hmm. something that's coming before it's really anything is actually sort of agreed or, or set in stone and it's very common but um you know it was one of those situations where i had been committed to beating the beast at that point for gosh well the the idea of the project itself for years actually and then at disney had been attached to that for a number of months and you know, I knew, as we talked about before, mm -hmm. that this wasn't a movie I could just sort of step into. I mm -hmm. knew I had to, I knew I had horse training, I knew I had dancing, I knew I, I knew I had three months of singing ahead of me, and I knew I had to be in London to, mm -hmm. to really do that. And this wasn't, this wasn't a movie I could just kind of um, parachute into. Mm -hmm. I knew, I knew I had to do the work, and, uh, and I had to be, I had to be where I had to be. So, you know, scheduling conflict-wise, it just, it didn't work out, but I'm so thrilled that musicals are so celebrated at the moment, <laughs> that they seem to be back in the zeitgeist and um, that people are kind of celebrating and loving music and singing and dancing again and I thought the film was wonderful and um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's lovely. Do you, is that something you'd like to do more of in the future now that you've been through Bell Boot Camp? Now that I've been through Bell Boot Camp, <laughs> I can take anything. I am ready for anything now. But would um, you like uh, musicals? Is that something you'd like to yeah, do? Yeah, I would actually. I, I just, you know, at first the singing thing for me was really tough. I felt very, very vulnerable, honestly. Mm -hmm. There's something about when you, when you act or you play a character, there's something a little bit to hide behind. Mm -hmm. But when you sing, there's like this vulnerability that I, I cannot even begin to mm. explain to you. It's so raw. There's, mm -hmm. there's just nowhere to hide. <laughs> and um, I also had this weird neurotic paranoia that I was like, um, Floris Foster Jenkins, you know, that oh. Meryl Street part that she played recently. Right. And that no one around me could bring themselves to tell me that I was actually, in fact, a terrible, terrible <laughs> singer. And I carried this around with me for months. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of a barrier I had to break through, whereas like, you got to get a grip on yourself, Em, mm -hmm. because 
I knew I would be performing some of this stuff live. I knew I'd be doing it in front of a huge audience. I knew mm -hmm. this musical was beloved. Um, you know, it's mildly terrifying singing with Alan Menken. He's one of the most talented, incredible composers of, in my mind, of all mm -hmm. time. I mean, I think it would be fair to, to use the word genius in, mm -hmm. in his, in that context. And um, yeah, I really kind of had to find this kind of belief in myself and and kind of and push through and um, but I, I lo loved it once once I once I got myself there um, it's such a it's so much fun mm -hmm. it really really is in our previous conversation you said you hadn't met with Paige O'Hara who uh, did the singing and the voice of Belle in the animated film but was she at the she was at the premiere did you cross paths there we yeah the LA premiere I have to say was really overwhelming for me because it was the first time I'd ever met Paige who played mm -hmm. the original Belle in the mm -hmm. animated movie um, I met Linda Wolverton who wrote my character she's written a ton of Disney movies she, she was involved in the Lion King among mm -hmm. other things she wrote Maleficent um, and as if that wasn't enough so I was like oh Paige Linda Alan Menken the whole <laughs> cast oh my god and then Celine Dion comes out of nowhere <laughs> and I'm like oh my goodness this is so overwhelming um, and she is someone who you know I don't come from a family that are particularly theater or movie mm -hmm. or Hollywood orientated but my mom loves Celine Dion <laughs> and I love Celine Dion and we used to listen to Celine Dion together and I was just like so psyched to tell her that she had she had been such a part of my childhood mm -hmm. that the movie had been such a big part of my childhood and and you know and to get to meet her and and for her to be part of our movie this new version for her to sing, she sings the song over the credits at the end um it's just such a i mean it wow. doesn't really get any better than that does it yeah, i want a soundtrack with celine dion <laughs> i mean come on it's so cool um so yeah so some some good moments but wow i stepped off that red carpet and i was like i need to sit down for a minute <laughs> this was this was a lot did you just uh, have a uh, cross paths with Pedro here momentarily or did you get to talk about Belle like you have this shared experience I know you. you know what we didn't get to talk for mm -hmm. very long I spoke to Linda Wolverton for longer actually because mm -hmm. I wanted I I ended up speaking to her about some of the script stuff and the story mm -hmm. stuff and there was some stuff I wanted to understand better but um, that was my first time meeting Paige mm -hmm. you've been on the other side of this uh, having played Hermione Granger in the Harry Potter films yeah. you've watched another actress pick up the role of this character for the stage show Harry Potter yes, and the Cursed yes. Child, uh, uh, Noma Dumazweni. And uh, you said you were overwhelmed by the feeling of seeing her perform because it felt good to see Hermione oh, live. Oh, yeah. Oh, my carried God. Carried on. It's so funny because I went, I went to see the stage production with so, well, I guess I just didn't think that, I, I just didn't think through what it could mm -hmm. mean to me. I didn't know what to expect, really. So I went in with very, just like, I don't know, without thinking about it too much, mm -hmm. I guess. And, and, and I was not prepared for how emotional it was for me to meet Noma, who plays the new Hermione. She kind of, she came into, I was in like a little room off the side of the theater mm -hmm. and she came in and, and gave me this big hug and I just burst into tears. I was like, it was so emotional for me to know that Hermione was going to be okay mm -hmm. and that everything kind of worked out and like what her future would look like and it was also such a relief kind of in a way to share her with someone mm -hmm. because yeah to share that with another person and to know what it was like to be part of that it's that character's life. I don't know how to explain it's like it. It's a horcrux it was like, in a way, isn't it? it because is. she's now living in another person. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's so true. And Positive I, And also horcrux. I felt like, you know, being part of Harry Potter was something I grew up with. And I was in it for over a decade. Mm -hmm. And I had been part of this family. And then the theatre group welcomed me like I was part of their family mm -hmm. immediately. And that was really emotional for me too. Because they made me feel that I was still part of it. Mm -hmm. And... That was very moving for me too, I think. Um, but I loved it. It's so good. If you're in London and you get the chance to go and see it, you, you must go and see it. It's 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 really really brilliant. Now, uh, the character uh, that she as she plays her is in middle age. Mm -hmm. um, do, in, as the years go by, do you ever foresee a return on screen as Hermione? I know. I know there's a lot of like contracts. You don't know what you're doing. You're causing <laughs> you're causing carnage. No, I um 
definitely nothing planned at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I we only just finished our uh, it was not so long ago that we finished our original series and i wouldn't want to get anyone's anyone's hopes up for sure mm -hmm. um, i'll ask you again in 20 years uh, yeah ask me in, <laughs> ask me in another 10. 10? Okay. yeah give me another 10 <laughs> and then we'll talk about it i want to thank you for being here with us thank the audience for sitting in on our conversation that's going to do it for our entertainment weekly radio town hall with emma watson thank you so much thank you uh, you can watch emma play Belle on the big screen in disney's beauty and the beast on friday march 17th Let's hear it for Emma Watson. Thank you.